Hey guys, it's Paul from Online Tax Academy and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how you can embellish or jazz up a tune. We're going to be taking the tune Mercy 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 by Joe Zarnall as an example study. Now if you're not familiar with this tune, there's a link down below where you can check out the original. Now by far the most common and one of the easiest ways to start to add an embellishment is to add what's called a grace note. So for example, if we take the first two measures and we're going to add these two grace notes here. Now these grace notes are just one semitone or half a step below the target note and the idea is we flick really quickly off the grace note onto that main note. Now this is a more professional way to play those notes without scooping into them. So check out how this line sounds with those two grace notes put in. Now you can also add like a diatonic grace note, meaning you're not going to go just a semitone down below, but you're just going to go one step down below in the key we're in. This has a subtly different effect, but it's a nice thing to play around with. Check out how this one sounds. Now approaching the note from below is by far the most common way to add grace notes, but you can add a grace note from above as well. In this example, the first grace note, this is a diatonic step above, like one scale tone above. It's not a semitone. And you'll find that's more common when you're approaching from above. Later on towards the end of the phrase, we've got that grace note, which is just a semitone above. The reason why this works is because the melody was just stepping down a whole tone. And so we're just filling in the gap with this little semitone grace note. And that sounds like this. Now, if you head over to the YouTube library at onlinesaxacademy.com, you'll be able to get the free PDF of all the different kinds of embellishments that we're gonna to cover today. Now, moving on from grace notes, we can start to play around with the melody's rhythm. One way we can play with a tune's rhythm is to bring a phrase slightly earlier than we would. This is called anticipation. So just going back to the original phrase here, you can see how we've moved a few of these notes earlier, a 16th note. And this can add a really interesting effect without having to add any extra notes. Now next up, if we take that same phrase, but now we're gonna delay a couple of those notes. Now you notice how I've pushed them later, but I've squeezed them into a smaller space. So it's now 16th notes instead of eighth notes. So the way you can do this is to pick a landing note and then the notes that precede it, you can start those a little bit later, but make them faster so that you're still landing on the same beat. It's just you're starting the previous notes a bit later and squeezing them into a smaller space. And another way to embellish a melody is when they have some longer notes. Instead of just playing one long note, you can start to repeat it in an interesting rhythmical way. Now you don't need to go crazy with this and add loads and loads of notes. Even just splitting a quarter note into a pair of eighth notes can give the melody a bit of an extra kick and a bit more forward momentum. Check out how this line sounds. Okay, next up, we're gonna look at what's called a gliss or a glissando. Now, the idea behind this is if you have an interval of say a third or a fourth, meaning here we can see we're going from a G to a B, that's known as the interval of a third because if I count out the notes G, A, B, it's one, two, three. Now, what we can do is fill in all the notes in between. So what I'm doing here is putting a chromatic scale between these notes and it has this cool kind of sliding effect. And that sounds like this. Now, depending on the interval, say for example, you had an octave, then I wouldn't recommend going up a chromatic scale because you're just gonna have to fit in so many notes in between. But there you could run up a major scale or even just a pentatonic scale. So just seven or five notes rather than trying to squeeze in 12 notes. Now for the next technique, we're gonna start to add in some extra notes to the melody. The first one you can do is just add in what I call a passing note. Now, instead of it being a grace note where you move off it as quickly as possible, with the passing notes, you want to make these notes more of a feature so you can really hear them. Them, and they'll take up an actual rhythmical value like a 16th note or an 8th note. So you can see in this example we've got two passing notes added in and they both take up a full value of a 16th note and it sounds like this. Now a slightly more intricate way is to add in what's called a turn. And with a turn what we're doing is hitting our note, we're stepping up, 
coming back to the note, going down, and then coming back to the note again. Now, most of the time, these turns will just be stepping up and down around the scale we're in. Of course, always use your ears with this. And if you notice that flattening or sharpening one of those notes makes it sound better, then always go with what sounds good to your ears. And so this phrase with the turns added in sounds like this. Now the final technique is called like a fill or sometimes a counter melody or sometimes it's called an answer phrase. And this is usually the place in the melody where there's like a long note or there's some rests. And this is where you would use your improvisation skills to improvise an answer phrase or a counter phrase or just fill in with a few notes to decorate the melody. So at this point in the original melody, you're just holding a long G. So this is a nice opportunity to shorten that G fill in with the gap you've created before getting back to that final G at the end of the phrase. Now this technique does involve knowing a bit more about improvising because essentially you're improvising a mini phrase. So check out how this sounds. Now this final technique is definitely the trickiest because it involves the most creativity, the most amount of improvisation from you. Now if you're new to improvising or you'd like to step up to the next level in your improvising, at Online Sax Academy I have a course that steps you through right from the very beginning. So even if you've never improvised before, you can start lesson one, module one, and you can gradually step your way through. Now, at the moment there's also a seven day free trial as well, so you can give it a go. Now if you do sign up to become a premium member, you'll also be able to get all the premium content that goes with each of my YouTube video lessons as well. And for today's lesson for premium members, you'll be able to download a full example performance of me using all of these techniques, along with the full PDF transcription of exactly what I'm playing and the MP3 file that you can download. Along with that, I've also included an extended backing track as well, so you can practice performing this song and even putting in your own improvised solos in the middle. So hopefully that's given you some inspiration for how to jazz up some melodies that you're learning at the moment. And of course, as ever, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on future lessons. And I'll see you guys next week.